It's linen season, it's the best fabric to wear for warmer weather. You can make amazing garments from this type of fabric and today is super, super practical. I have over 20 proven tips and tricks that are going to help you work with this fabric and get amazing results. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing limitless sewing make sure you catch up on this fun series watch the previous video that was all about the linen fabric itself how it's made the types of weaves different weights sewing styles that are perfect for this fabric pros and cons of working with linen and how to pre-treat it so check out the previous video there is a lot to see i have over 20 proven tips and tricks that are going to help you work with this fabric proven from my own experience from what you've seen me sew on the channel already lots of practical sewing content for you to see up close let's hop into it now we have so many tips I don't even want to count them this episode is really image intensive as I talk there's a lot of images video photos so I want you to enjoy it and just see what I'm talking about rather than just watching me talk about it because I mentioned that linen was a costly fabric even if you are using a blend it's still a costly fabric it's really important that you know that whatever you're gonna make is already going to fit you so don't get your beautiful linen fabric and just cut it out directly without checking for fit especially if you're newer to sewing if you are pretty experienced and you're very content to do flat pattern measurements on a really simple style side basta and a back seam there are just a few measurements I would do on the pattern to make sure it's correct for me I would be happy to cut that straight out of linen but just because I'm really confident in the process but if you are newer to sewing just whip up another type of woven fabric a plain cotton some quilting cotton muslin fabric and make a test garment first I've made test garments out of all my linen projects whether it be blazers coats pants you know whatever I'm making I have taken the time to sew up a muslin and by sewing up a muslin I mean a test garment some people get really really picky about the terminology there and muslin is a type of fabric right it's like a raw cotton type of thing I never ever use that I just use any woven material that is similar to what I'm going to use in the weight but I'm not going to use linen of course if I'm going to sew with linen that's just expensive take your time to figure out and fit the garment first before you cut out your nice linen fabric so you don't get disappointed and feel like you've lost a lot of money I have seen people in the sewing community sew up pants made out of linen and they say this is my test garment and I'm like <gasps> I'm like having a small stroke there. But anyway, everyone makes their own decisions. I'm just sharing my opinion around that. I would not use nice costly fabric to make a test garment. Because linen is a fabric that frays a lot, you really don't want to cut into those notches. Now this is practice that I use for every fabric. I never cut into notches for anything. Like you never, like ever in five years of my sewing channel have seen me cut into a notch and I know it's common practice you see that on tutorials and YouTube everywhere and a knot can be really practical can be really fast you don't need marking tools you already have your scissors there it can be really fast and easy to line up your pieces later you you are cutting into the seam allowance if you're making fitting adjustments you might actually need that seam allowance for something and you've just got a big old hole there this is a type of fabric that's going to fray and that weakened area later down the line can turn into a hole you don't want that with your linen fabric so just mark them with chalk i try to keep my marks as small as possible just enough for me to be able to see them right on the edge you can use thread marking you can use a lot of ways to mark your linen that don't involve snipping into things because it's hard to see which is the right and the wrong side on some of these linen fabrics when you are cutting out your garments just make sure you mark somehow which is the wrong side create a tag pin on a little piece of paper on each of the pattern piece i draw lines with chalk because that is just the easiest way and the chalk i use just comes out really easily it doesn't stain my fabric it's just white chalk taylor's chalk so i'm not concerned about staining it i just i just make sure i have the wrong side marked really easily so that then the construction process is much easier and i don't end up getting confused when you're cutting out your pattern pieces don't worry it's easy use pins use pattern weights use a rotary cutter use a scissors you can lift your fabric a little to cut it it's not going to move underneath the pattern piece it's just really easy to cut so i wouldn't fuss about the cutting process just be accurate and be neat about it but it's not like cutting rayon or silk on certain areas depending on the type of style you're sewing you might have details where you need to reinforce certain areas linen is loosely woven and so some of these areas might give out over time 
you know, where there is stress involved. I've done this in white so you can see. I have stabilized this area with a narrow strip of interfacing, 3 eighths of an inch, and I've just molded it to a curve there. As soon as I finish cutting out the pattern so that this curve is nice and stable and doesn't stretch. I think this is good practice. If you don't want to try this, at least some stay stitching is going to help around this curve so it doesn't start stretching and sagging. This is bias right here. The fabric will want to deform right there and especially linen. So I would 100% put a strip of interfacing or stay tape on pocket entrances for example, on pants and skirts, you have slanted areas. Interface those first before sewing so that those don't end up stretching out. The first two examples have curved pocket entrances. The opening is higher here around the high hip. You're also subjected to the stress of your hands and your hips pulling along that seam. These other ones have slanted pocket openings. Same area that is partially cut on bias. Definitely would be an area that would stretch out and gape in the form if you don't stabilize. The opening for the slanted pockets is lower so it involves more of the mid to full hip. So you definitely want this seam to be stable. Just a strip of interfacing does the trick if you have fusible stay tape that works also it's just a more expensive notion if you are sewing welt pockets onto a piece you need to interface that area of the welt pocket now this is best practice i've seen this in most patterns that have welt pocket instructions some patterns don't have that with your instructions thing i think it's missing especially if you're doing this on linen definitely you want to interface the area where you have a welt pocket there are little areas that you'll snip into corners any area where you'll snip into a corner it's good to have some interfacing there. This is a single welt pocket entrance and even if you're not going to use the pocket that much when you put your hands in there is a component of stress at those corners. These pockets are decorative but still the linen has the risk of having a hole. Same as these trousers. These are on the back when you sit down it's going to pull on those seams so definitely you do want interfacing in these areas so that these techniques that you put your effort into can last. Where you're going to have a zipper even if it's just a centered zipper on the back of a pencil skirt would have interfacing there if it's a fly front zipper or same any area where you snip into a corner it's good to have some interfacing there you know on the front of a v neckline for example where you put a facing and turn it to the other side it's nice to have interfacing there on the edge of my neckline you can see some white peeking out there and that's because instead of stay stitching i fused on a little strip of interfacing If you're sewing a blouse that has a button band or the area also needs to be interfaced because you need that extra structure there to hold up the sewing of the buttons and the button holes. For linen, definitely you do need that for anything really. But I know some people want to skip those steps. I, I'm not sure why. It's just good practice to do that because those are stress areas there and with any fabric that is loosely woven, you're just putting your garment at risk. The next one is really, really important and you really do need to stabilize curved edges that have a bias component with stay stitching. Stay stitching is done within the seam allowance that the pattern is using. You use a regular stitch length. I like to do stay stitching directionally, which means you're doing it in the same direction. So from shoulders down along a sleeveless armhole, for example, from the shoulders in towards the center for a neckline, for yokes, for edges of anything, for waistlines, also super important. If you're sewing pants, have a curved shape on the top, you wanna stay stitch that waistline. Now a step above stay stitching would be to fuse strips of interfacing or fusible stay tape. I know that notion exists. I just don't have it, I, I can't buy it. And I know it's a really expensive type of notion. If you wanna use yardage of that, it can get really expensive, but you can make your own. You can just use really lightweight, non-stretch fusible interfacing. Just cut your own long strips and use those to stabilize those areas. I do that a lot on necklines, on waistlines, especially for pants, and it works a treat. Another step above stay stitching or interfacing the edge would be to use a piece of selvage so say for example you're sewing a pair of pants or a skirt that is pretty fitted and the way that this is finished is the facing inside not a separate waistband that top edge there of your skirt or pant could be finished also after stay stitching with some tool tape right on the edge it's going to be within the seam allowance 
you don't have twill tape you can just cut edges of selvage of cotton selvage that is what I do and you just sew that right on the edge of the waist once you have your pant or your skirt constructed it's going to keep that structure there without it stretching out over time once you have that stabilized then you can go on and sew your facing so that is another step above stay stitching or using strips of interfacing now another way you can use twill tape or cotton selvage is when you have a curved waistband you're using linen curved waistband has a shape it's not a rectangle on the top edge of this curved waistband there's a lot of bias there it's quite curved if you've seen or sewn this type of style also you can sew in some selvage on the top when you're sewing the inner and the outer waistband together it can be cotton selvage it can be twill tape and it's going to keep the top of that waistband that is curved stable and not stretching out over time which can happen if you don't do anything to it even if your curved waistband is interfaced it can still stretch out over time so it is good practice to stabilize with that twill tape or cotton selvage and especially for linen fabric. If you want to have a garment that is going to wrinkle less, say a dress or a jacket, a blazer, consider lining it. When the garment is lined, the lining inside is going to stabilize the fabric and it will take the pressure off the seams when you wear it also the linen itself won't have your skin directly on there so in essence when you wear your jacket it's just going to wrinkle less than if it were unlined these two jackets are more tailored they have a lot of seam lines they fit pretty close to the body and they are fully lined also part of the structures have been interfaced mainly all the front pieces a few extra steps but the wrinkling on these types of garments is much less these are the ones you wouldn't just throw in the wash this is simplicity 8604 i made for my mom i also made myself a beige colored one this green one is the liliana jacket from seamwork but it is not the original pattern i just took it as a base and added shaping and zippers and lining the front of this pattern is also fully interfaced they are lengthier projects but that look amazing with linen maybe if you want to have a nice adventure with your sewing you can take on a project like this that is always super satisfying once done just takes a little bit longer i know Lining is an extra step. I have lined so many garments. I made my mom a lyric dress a few years ago and I usually pull out all the stops when I sew for my mom. She loves lined garments and I've made many of them for her before in the past. So this one has a few hacks like a black waistband. This is a polka dot printed linen rayon blend. Quite structured and inside I have a satin lining. It was super fun to do. Lining is not too hard. You just basically use the same pattern pieces you're using for the dress. That's what I did. I did stabilize the neckline there of the main pieces with interfacing. I didn't line the sleeves so you can see that the lining is caught in the seam allowance of the sleeves so it's not too bulky there and it's a great dress. It does not wrinkle, it just looks really nice, it hangs beautiful. Mum says that when she puts it on it feels like a really expensive dress, it's just got a different weight and anything that you line just looks so much better. So lining is something you might want to consider looking into. You're just using basically the same pattern pieces that your garment has if there aren't any specific lining instructions. Also, if you're making pants that are a bit more tailored that are part of a suit set, you can consider lining half of those pants with silk organza or lining fabric and that is also going to prevent the back of the pants from stretching out and the knees of course these types of lined garments are going to be more labor intensive and those are the ones you want to dry clean afterwards so you don't ruin all your beautiful work <laughs> one thing you don't want to do with your linen garment is stretch it while you sew what i mean by that is taking your fabric with one hand and the other and just stretching it while you're passing it through the feed dogs i have seen people that are newer to sewing doing that type of thing trying to stabilize the fabric somehow or trying to control it or if you're doing a curve they like stretching it to get that curve into a straight sort of shape while you're sewing it instead of moving the fabric along and following the shape and because linen is prone to stretching out in these curved areas you know it is something that you need to consider and be mindful of not doing while you sew of course you can steam and press and maybe recover some of the shape but sometimes it's just being stretched out too much and then the garment is not just not going to hang correctly where this might happen is on princess seams for example where you're trying to fit two shapes and two curves differently one to the other so just be careful with that try to follow the shape that you're sewing let the feed dogs do their thing 
just hold your fabric and just guide it through but don't pull it or stretch it out of shape the best needles are just your typical universal needles the number just depends on the weight that you're using if it's light to medium weight 80 would be okay if it's a heavier weight 90 if it's really heavy and you're going through a lot of layers maybe you even want to use a hundred the number 100 on it so it just depends i have some linen in my stash that is sort of like a raw linen because of the color it is so so fine and so she and so transparent i would probably use a 60 with that one because it's just so fine you do need a newer needle that is nice and sharp you don't want a blunt old needle that might snag on your fabric and start pulling it and breaking your fibers so just be careful with that polyester thread is going to work really well it's a really strong thread it's fine it usually doesn't have lint although you could use cotton thread if you really wanted to but i would just stick with the polyester thread i think it's just easier to work with also it doesn't break at your needle sometimes so it's it's a nicer thread the next step is one that i would say is good practice but that i don't follow that much and is pressing your seams while you go this is general sewing advice for any project but i can't get myself to sew a seam get up and go to my iron i think it's really expensive to just have my iron on continuously for hours while i sew so i just don't do that with linen you can finger press instead um, i don't need to go to the ironing board either because you can finger press linen so i find this easier quicker it saves me a trip over there but if you're not used to doing this a guide stitch might help you on the sewing machine with a long stitch length and then you can actually go to the iron and press this in neatly but bam pressed <laughs> which works a treat you just press it with your fingers on your table i like to do like a little accordion on my fingers and let it loose and it's pressed perfectly with your hands you can build up a number of seams until it's really really unavoidable that you have to go up and press pressing is important don't just leave your garment unpressed think about your sewing practices and how often you need to go there finger pressing is amazing also about pressing Linen needs a really high temperature to hold a crease really well and you can actually end up scorching, burning the fabric and making it shiny which does not look good and once the fabric gets shiny like that it just won't go away there's nothing you can do to recover the original look of the fabric so you definitely need a type of pressed cloth I'm not going to use silk organza because I'm not going to buy silk for that I just, I've never used it what I have is cotton, really lightweight cotton, white color that I can see through it and that's what I use to press my seams as I go. I mentioned before that linen frays a lot so you do need to finish these seams and you can study what type of seam finish you want to do depending on the garment's weight, depending on how heavy your linen fabric is. So if you're using a really lightweight linen you might want to do some of the seams with French seams. There's no rule that says that you have to finish all the seams in the same way. The important thing to accomplish is that the seams are protected and it looks neat inside. So I would generally sew straight seams with the French seams, shoulder seams, side seams and then I would sew sleeves with my machine and just do a surged edge. I really dislike French seams on curved seams and I know some of you in the comments have told me that you can do them. I've never said you can't do them, you can do them. They are just really uncomfortable for me and it just prevents you having a good range of motion on the sleeve. That is my opinion. Of course you can French seam the sleeve, I just personally don't like it. All of us have the right to make up our minds and have our preferences and I share mine on my sewing channel. <laughs> so it's perfectly fine for me to sew some of them with a French seam and others just with a surged edge. Surging the edges of linen is perfectly fine. It's not an inferior technique to finish your seams. It's perfectly fine. It's going to protect the edges and it's going to look neat inside also. Now if you're working with more medium to heavyweight linen, French seams are a no-go that is just too bulky. It's just not going to look good. So you can sew your seams normally and just sew and surge. Why am I not mentioning zigzags here? Because zigzags, they don't do the best job at protecting the edges of seams i have used zigzags in the past with linen and they still end up fraying over time it just yeah i i just i personally don't like zigzagging it doesn't mean that you can't you can one fun thing that you can do is find the edges of your seams i have done this with a few projects and that is really pretty inside you're not going to see it on the outside no one's going to know one thing i would say though is just try to bind with something that is really really lightweight so it doesn't add to the bulk of the fabric so i've made bias tape out of rayon really lightweight rayon and i've bound seams with that 
I did that with this orange shirt and it's so beautiful inside. I even did the mitered corners of the side vents with that binding already there on the edges. So that is really, really pretty. I've also bound edges of a linen jacket with satin. So I've made yardage and yardage of that material. It was really, really lightweight. I've also bound facings with chiffon. I have made bias tape out of chiffon and that's been amazing. I bound that edge of the facing with leftover chiffon bias tape that I'd made for another project. Just try to look for a material that's lightweight. I wouldn't use store-bought bias tape to bind the edges inside. I think that's just really bulky and stiff. I'm really not a fan of cotton for binding the insides of jackets because it can turn out really bulky. That's just my opinion though. Technically you could. About the hem, I have some things to say. If I don't have a matching serge a thread for my garment. I don't want to just serge the bottom of the skirt or pant or whatever I'm making with any other color and just fold it up because that's not going to look as nice. Sure the edges inside you can serge them with a different color no one's going to see them but if you are walking around you know you have the potential of that serged edge being seen from the outside it just depends on what you're doing and what type of garment it is. So in that case I would suggest you fold up twice so you fold up once by a smaller amount and then another fold and that will enclose those raw edges permanently and securely. So after you do that, you can sew the hem by hand, you can sew it by machine, you can top stitch it to make it be a contrast, you know, that is up to you. Now, if I had serge a thread that was the exact color or matched really well, then I don't think it's wrong to just serge neatly and fold up once. With linen, I wouldn't do a tiny hem, I'd do at least one inch. So a deeper hem than you would do with silk with rayon, for example. And then of course you can hand sew that if you want a really neat look or you can top stitch that with matching thread or with contrast thread. I think linen begs to be top stitched. It's one of the fabrics where top stitching looks the best. You can go and top stitch every single seam if you want to. And it's just purely decorative. You know, it's not like some neat fabrics that don't press flat, some polyester fabrics that they just don't press. So. In that case, top stitching ends up being functional to keep the seams flat. It's not like that for linen. You can get a really nice flat crease there. You can press your fab, you can press your seams amazingly with linen. So top stitching is decorative mainly and you can choose to do one row right on the edge. In that case, I always think the blind hem presser fork gives you that precision and that neatness. And you don't even have to be experienced to get a really professional look there because the presser fork is gonna do the work. You just move the needle to the left and there is a little metal ridge that will go against the seam and you can just boom, edge stitch and it will look amazing. If you want to do two rows of top stitching like you do on inseams or shoulder seams or yokes, that second row can be done closer to the edge at a quarter of an inch which is my preference. I like that look, I think it's nice and delicate. I like using my quarter inch presser foot for that and if you are a quilter you probably have one. I think a lot of you might have a quarter inch presser foot but you never use it. I would pull that out and sew with that one also. Now to avoid rippling in this area where you've top stitched, if you're going to do the two rows, sew them in the same direction. So if you start from the top, do both from the top. Don't do one this way and one the other way because then you might end up with ripples there and that doesn't look very good. Now about the color of top stitching, if you want your garment to look a little bit more formal, a little dressier, when you top stitch with a matching color, you're going to achieve that. If you do top stitch with something contrasting, like if you're sewing navy pants and you're top stitching in a beige color, that contrast is just gonna make your garment look a bit more casual. So it's up to you what look you want. I do either or, it just depends on my mood. <laughs> if you're top stitching with a matching color, 
then probably a little bit of back stitching there on your areas is not going to be so noticeable i don't think it's a problem but if you're using contrasting color thread i would not back stitch there because then it just looks ugly it just gets really bulky in that case i would just start sewing leave a long thread push it back and knot it by hand same as like if you're doing a hem you're going around you don't want to get to the area where you started and do that because you're going to see that now when I started sewing this down I did it back tack I left two threads there just left them loose now I thread them with a needle and I can thread all this to the back and make a few knots at the back just by hand that means that I won't have the bulk of back tacking along the facing. I really wouldn't want to have that there. It would look bulky and ugly. If you have a pattern that has an area with some gathers, because the fabric is a little stiffer, they will sort of stand out from the body a little more. So in my personal sewing practice, I usually don't sew garments that have gathers with linen. But you might want to, and you might have a beautiful, really lightweight linen that you want to use. So that is no drama. Just do your gathers as usual. Do your two rows of long stitch length, gather your item. When, once you have it fitting into the area you're gathering it into, what could make it easier to sew is that you give it some steam and press that area flat before sewing. It will be less bulky and it will be easier to sew those gathers on rather than having all the bulk of, of the fabric just on its own like that without pressing. So that's just one tip that I never do because I never sew gathers with linen, but you might want to. If you're sewing dresses or tops, blouses, Finishing necklines and armholes works really well with self bias tape. So if you have little bits left over from your linen, make bias tape out of that and it works perfectly. You know, you can steam the linen. Linen gives so it will really conform to your curves there and you don't need that bias tape to be super narrow like I've shown you in other bias binding technique videos where I prefer a narrow binding on the inside. But with linen, you can get away with it being a little wider, not super wide, but five eighths of an inch wide. You know, it will conform to the curve there and it will look really beautiful. And it's an acceptable way to finish necklines and armholes. Facings are also acceptable to finish necklines and armholes. You know, you can find facings on the waist for pants and, and skirts. And it's so comfortable when you wear garments that are designed like that. As usual, if you have facings, waistbands, cuffs, collars, just block fuse them it'll give you the best result you won't end up with smaller pieces linen does react to the glue on the interfacing and i know by experience in the past i used to fuse my facings and end up with smaller facings it can happen to all fabrics and linen it definitely does block fuse i've shown you many many times before you can see some images here just figure out how much fabric you need interface that first let the fabric shrink let it do its thing and then put your facing pieces or whatever pieces you need and then cut them out. That's valid for any fabric. It's also valid for working with linen, of course. Before cutting open your buttonholes or when you've sort of finished the process of sewing welt pockets or a V, any area that you might have weakened with a little snip into there, just put a dot of fray check there. Let it dry. That will give you a lot of peace of mind for the future that that item is a little bit more protected. Now I'm all into linen right now. You'll see a bit of content surrounding linen these next couple of days. You know, last month I had a large topic around rayon. Now I've chosen linen and I'll try to cover different types of fabric like that as time goes on. I know it's really practical and I know you always enjoy it because you leave me comments. I hope you enjoy this content. I have made a playlist as always when I do a mini series so that it's easy for you to click on one link and find all the content there. So I'll leave you all the links down below. Remember during the month of June, I am focusing on linen as much as I can. It doesn't mean you won't see other projects made out of neat fabrics. You probably will, but there will be a large chunk of the content for this month focused on linen. You'll see linen pants, dresses, all sorts. Some inspiration. I'm planning to also share my linen collection with you so you can get some ideas. So lots of fun coming your way all about linen. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe, tap on the bell so you don't miss out or the fun content I'm making for you every single month. I'll see you back here again with more sewing very soon. Bye.